Now, some of you, while I was worshiping, you felt as if your chest wanted to burst. Stand up. You felt as if you want to blow out. Very quickly, stand up, please. Just stand up. Please. Heavily ready. Even if you don't have capacity to manage it, you push it. You expand capacity. So I encourage you as the meeting goes on, just make sure you stay in the atmosphere of the spirit. Make sure you are praying the Holy Ghost. Alright? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pray the Holy Ghost, everybody. Thank you. of the pastor's appreciation service that is ahead of what we're doing here. Now, if you are very sensitive, you can pull much more than waiting for administration time. Now, if you if you are smart in the spirit and you have a prophetic eye, so see, you will find out that there is a cloud in this place. How many of you notice it? There is a cloud. It's dense. If you can see. You notice it, right? Yes. Stay. Maintain the atmosphere of the spirit. You are in the Bible says, and they were baptized under the cloud of Moses. You can come into the atmosphere of a man like I thought last week on spiritual DNA and be baptized under his realm. Something can pick you. Something can pick you. You might get much more than you even came for. If you are sensitive, wherever there is faith and honor, impartations flow naturally. Wherever there is faith and honor, spiritual DNA is released with or without the person's permission. Most of the times in meeting, those that get the heavy deluge of his presence is not even those who had hands laid on them, are those who by faith and honor were able to do the wealth of the spirit. Because sometimes those that have hands laid over them. Are not even sensitive to know what they are releasing or receiving rather that's why i taught the message last week on spiritual dna so you know what happens to you are we together so i beg you remain in the atmosphere of the spirit this is not a fellowship grace firm is an agenda to raise a kind of people that's why it's not a ministry where we come to show the dimensions of the spirit we have or the wealth of his knowledge he has unveiled to us 
but to bring us to that reality. So if you have a pastor that can hear, then you are supposed to hear. The Bible says, He that walketh with the wise shall become wise. Are we together? So if you sit under the cloud of a man, you are supposed to be baptized by the atmosphere of that cloud. In no time, you should see it traits of a spiritual DNA being left upon you. The same situations answer, answer to him in the realms of the spirit. In no time, the Bible says, and immediately, the same men, felt they were the classmates of Elisha. He said, come, don't you know your master will be taken away? If this man, let's go. The Bible says, when the mantle and the double portion of Elijah fell upon him, when he came back, he said, wow, of Elijah is upon him. What did they knew? Or what did they see rather? When the physical contenance of the man never changed. The apparel he put on was not changed. Yet they could take notice that the spirit of Elijah, Elijah, has rested on him. The Bible says, and they bowed themselves to him. So sometimes you can sit down in a meeting like this and not understand what is happening to you. It's not a lecture or is an atmosphere of grace. You can look at your life in two months, three months, one year, and know I am not the same again. Something is changed in me. Are we together? So when we come together like this, make sure faith and honor is in place. The Bible said many touched them. Touched Jesus. Many. Even Peter said, Master, what do you mean by virtue has gone out of you? Look at the many people touching you. He said, no. This one, I didn't plan to release the virtue. My intention was to go heal Jairus' daughter. But by faith and honor, somebody has drawn something from my life. By faith and honor. That's why I told us last week, I can pick my handkerchief right now and give it to you. And it will mean nothing to you. But a man who is desperate in need of a healing can come and I'll give him that same handkerchief. And you see him get it. Why? Faith and honor. He does. That's why the Bible says, do not give precious things to swine. That's why God desires us to hunger for things. No matter how wonderful fried rice could be, it is useless to a man that is healed. Or that assume he's not hungry. At that state of hunger, even if they give you Gary, it is extremely important to you. It is equivalent to fried rice at that point. That's why God desire that a man must hunger for the things of the spirit. Even as the giftings of the spirit, 1 Corinthians 12, it says that we have diverse gifts, the power gifts, the vocal gifts, and the revealing, the, the, um, the, the revelation gifts. He still said at the end, we have to convert for them, yet he called them gifts. Gifts are something you give freely, you just give it to me. But he said, we have to convert for it to Honestly, you must travel in the place of prayer and say, Lord, I desire to see the workings of miracle in my life. To covet earnestly for it. Are we together? Please, are we following? So, when you come into his presence, make sure faith and honor is in place. You will put so much from his presence. And you even desire and expect it. Faith and honor must be in place. The hearing ears and the seeing eyes. Give me Proverbs 20 and verse 12. They speak about writing materials where people of the word, where people of prayer and worship. So when we come here, we do the tree. Bible says the hearing ear and the seeing eyes. The Lord had made even both of them. Now I said to us last week. When you see a statement like this in English, it's tautology. You can't say the hearing ear because the ear naturally is supposed to what? You can't say a seeing eyes. What is the eye meant for? To That's why English will tell us you can't say lift up your hands. You say lift your hands because once you say lift up, it means your hands is going up. So when you say lift up your hands, they say it's tautology. So when the Bible will say the hearing ear, it means there are ears that don't hear. There are eyes that don't see. No wonder he said, seeing they will not see. Hearing they will not hear. They are dull of understanding. He 
give me Romans 8 14. Now, hear me. Why do we need to teach a topic like this? I battled in my spirit to teach a topic like this. Why? Because when you teach on the prophetic, people take it so much for granted. It becomes so simple to them. They say, oh, this is what you are even doing. Alright? This is what you are doing. Like when I was talking to those two people right now, I was hearing, I will do that later, I was hearing animal production. You see, when I tell them what I want, I hate now. It looks so simple. The Bible says, For as many as are led by my spirit, the one qualified to be called what? Sons. To as many that are led. To your mind. Thank God is the ability for you to be led by the Spirit of God. John 20, Jesus speaking to Peter. He said, when you were young, you could go anywhere you desire to go. But when you were old, when you get old, another will take your hand and lead you. Speak he of the Holy Ghost. So your maturity in the realm of the Spirit is your ability to follow the leadings of the Spirit. the hearing ears and the seeing eyes give me John 10 27 John 10 27 now hear me my sheep hear my voice I know them and they follow me so what's the qualification to become his sheep you must what hear his voice I don't know if I'm a child of God. This one way you know. Your ability to what? Hear his voice. Tell your neighbor you are not a bastard. You have a father. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. That's why if all your revelation, if all your direction in life is only coming from what another man says, your life is questionable. You are an imbecile. I keep telling some of my children, you can't question God's oil upon my life. You can't put me under any form of pressure. Why? I know for sure that there is a level you will get in your work with me that even God will not answer my prayers over your life again. He expects you to have grown, to have dealt with that issue yourself. He doesn't raise imbecile. How will you expect a child of that years to come and say, Mommy, breast, breast, I want to suck milk. Will you be proud of that child? doesn't raise him back. That's why sometimes you see people extremely close to you. Those that have sat under you, walked with you, you scream over their life. Nothing changes. Yet you see somebody just come in a few seconds, you speak a word, that's changed. God will say, I refuse to hear you about this one. My sheep hear my voice. As much as you come to church and you get the revelation of God from His Word, as much as you come to church and someone can give you a prophetic direction, you must get to a point where personally for yourself you can pick His voice. Isaiah 50, verse 4. He said, He awakeneth me morning by morning and teacheth me to know. So I tell my sons, any morning you wake up and not hear a word from God, to an extent I can question whether you are still with him. He didn't say, awakening me today, tomorrow you will leave me. Morning by morning. And that's why the easiest time to see in the spirit is the time between your wake up and your sleep. Those around me knows. As I wake up, a book is already in front of me. I'm writing. But you, when you just wake up, what are you looking for? What's up? Your phone, you want to check the messages that came in the midnight. Are you a witch? Is it discussions in your meeting you are looking for? Just straight to your WhatsApp. It's just on. Give me Isaiah 30, verse 20. Isaiah 30, 20. Please look up. Very quickly. Isaiah 30, 20. And though the Lord give thee the bread of adversity and water of affliction, yet shall he not thy teachers be moved from thy corner. 
He said, no matter what God decides to do in the dispensation, even when he brings his vengeance, one thing he will leave with us is our teachers. Right? But I am, I shall what? See thy teachers. Why will your eyes see your teachers? Never. Now wait, wait, wait. When you see a column in scriptures, when you see a column in scriptures, it means the next thing I will say is qualifying what I just finished saying. Please, are you together with me? When you read this, a scripture, sometimes you see two dots, a, 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 a colon. It means the next thing I will say is qualifying what I just finished saying. Oh, we did this in normal English language. 21. And I, I shall hear a word be, behind me saying, This is the way to go. So sometimes when you sit in a meeting like this, as you go, where you need a direction for your life, the word you have heard jumps up like a personality. And say, Go this way, go this way. You will hear a word behind you saying, This is the way that you should go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me Genesis 21 verse 19. Genesis 21 verse 19. Now this is the story of Agar when she was chased by Abraham. The Bible says she got to a point in the desert she was looking for water for the child and she couldn't find one. As a good mother who doesn't want to see the child die before her, she left the child and began a journey. Take me to the verse before this. Let's just have the foundation. Now, this is God's instruction to her. Arise, lift up the lad and hold him in thy hand for we make him a great nation. Verse 19. And God opened her eyes. He didn't create a well there. Did you observe that scriptures? She was in search of water. The Bible didn't say God made a well. He only opened her eyes. The well has already been there. The same place she was trying to give up so you can be in a land and think everybody is feeling the recession like you do. It's not so. Not everybody is feeling the heat. What he needs to do for you in that city is to open your eyes. some of us we've been receiving direct words from God but our ears are blocked money making ideas that will change our situation in splits of seconds but our ears can hear how can you survive life when you can't hear his voice or cannot see what he shows how do you know what you are called to do how do you know your assignment? How do you know where you are supposed to be by time? Give me Isaiah 48 17 very quickly. Isaiah 48 17. This is somewhere there. Very quickly. Isaiah 48 17. 17. Please be fast. Thus say the Lord I read him, the only one of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit. Which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Next verse. Oh, that thou art akin to my commandment. Then had thy peace been as a river. And thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Next verse. Let me see what's there. Thy seed also had been as the sun. And thine offspring as the bow well like the grave thereof. His name should not have been cut off or destroyed. You will save yourself so much of unnecessary stress in life. If you can hear his voice. He said I am your God that teaches thee to prosper. If only you had the ability to hear me. He said your peace will have flowed like a river. You will have sat into a realm of divine ease in life. If only you will have heard my voice. That journey. That accident that you were involved in. If only you had heard his voice. If only you have heard his voice. The strength of any man in life is his ability 
to hear God's voice. The strength of any man in life is his ability to hear God's voice. We are configured, designed, fashioned, made not to lead ourselves. He says to many that are led. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. If only you have listened to him, that academic stress you are in now, you wouldn't have been there. He said, I wanted to teach you how to what? Profit. He said, I am your God. It's my desire to teach you to profit. That's the essence of the meeting tonight. Because the first point of the prophetic grace is not for you to be looking for how to call people's name and phone number. It's how to discern his direction for your life. By time. When you wake up each morning knowing what you are supposed to do, where you are supposed to go, now, for those who stay with me, some of my sons who stay around with me, most of my sermons, I get them immediately I wake up from sleep in the morning. Ask them. We can be doing our devotion. You just see me with a bag. I've finished three messages. They're working. I'm writing. They're working. We're praying. I'm writing. It teaches the nature is that you are not supposed to what? Lead yourself. You will save yourself of too much of stress, of too much of depressions and frustrations in life if you have the ability to hear God's voice. One of the kings in scripture that had the record of not losing any battle was the king David. And one of his secrets was his ability to hear God's voice. David will never embark in a battle he will not consult God first. He will never embark in a battle he will not consult God. One time he came from a battle and found out that his houses were destroyed. His wives and families were taken away and that of his men. Now, normal human nature demands that the first thing he do is to chase after them. But that man still went to the place of prayer. Oh God, should I pursue? God say yes. See how much a man had such an intimacy with God. He needed to be sure what type of pursue God was saying. He said, the pursue you are talking will I overcome? He was not concerned about the delay of how much distance the army will create. Now hear me. Nothing is too urgent not to seek God's voice about what did I say again? Nothing is too urgent. Don't let anything put you under pressure. Nothing is too urgent not to seek God's voice about. You need to do this. Lord, what do I do? The Bible says in Proverbs 3 verse 5, it says, trust in the Lord with only all thy heart. Do not be wise in thy own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Do not be wise in your own understanding. Do not be wise in your own understanding. Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way that steemeth right to a man. But the end of it is what? Destruction. That's why you can't trust your human flesh. You have to rely on the spirit of God. You can by human calculation decide and say this is the right way to go about this. The Bible says the end of it might be what? Destruction. Pay any price you can to enjoy hearing God's voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me Matthew 13, 16. Now, one time Jesus was asked a question. But blessed are your eyes for the sea and your ears for the word hear. Yeah. Blessed are they for the sea and the hear. Give me First Kings 17 verse let me see something there. First Kings 17. 
the next 30 minutes I'll be done after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land now Elijah came in verse, in verse 1 of the first king 17 he said by my word there will be no rain in this land for 300 half years by my word he got, and God said Elijah you have put yourself into a trouble but come I have provided a brook where you can get water are we together now hear me even if God didn't send Elijah he's obligated to make his work come to pass then he deal with him personally an ambassador that goes to United States on behalf of Nigeria and declare that the government of Nigeria gives one billion can never be reversed Nigeria must pay it then deal with him personally so there is a hard to get I don't know to believe it there is a hard to get to with God <laughs> you can do certain things he didn't send you and still see results by the vantage point of an understanding because heaven is obligated to fulfill the mandate of an ambassador so God now sent a raven bed he said this red bed will give you food what? morning and evening now that will fail us to allow permission for us to browse on the raven bed right now so we can post that on, on the screen the raven bed when you go home please do the research is the most stingiest bed on it that's the bed God chose so when a man stays with direction it doesn't matter how stingy that uncle is what is it meant for you will be let out of your hands the most stingiest bed on earth yet the bed was under compulsion not to eat that food by divine direction so when God releases his voice to us he has positioned everything needed to bring the actualization of what he said in place such that the duty for you is to act in his voice so in this verse the bible says and the water dried up and god now said elijah the water has dried up go to the to the land of zarephath and there you'll meet a widow i have commanded her to give you food when you have a continuous flow of divine direction access to god's voice it brings men on that divine compulsion to favor you. So it wasn't just because the woman had a spirit of giving. Now, how do you, can you explain? The woman said, let me eat. It's the last meal for me and my child to eat and die. Yet something moved that to still give you without question. It's not because he was a man of God. The Bible says she has been commanded. She was under divine pressure and compulsion. That's why I say you will save yourself so much stress in life if you know how to stay with divine direction. Don't map out schemes for yourself. Always learn to hear his voice. Lord, you promised to take me to America. Don't go in front of embassy, they will arrest you. Or start attaching yourself to every white man you see. You've said it. Show me the way. You might be shocked the way he might choose to do it. Because God's ways might be confusing, but his motives and his intentions are always pure. Are we together? Do anything to keep yourself in a position that at all times you have an access to God. You know what he is saying to you part time. He said, I want to teach you to profit. He can tell you, son, leave this hand out. No question will come after. Do you see someone with many frustration with this? You read a complete hand out. And you say a different question. And yet we say we have the Holy Ghost. It's not for tongues. Mm -mm. He said when he comes, John 14, he will lead you into all. He will teach you what? All things. Some. So I keep shouting everywhere I go that the Holy Ghost upon a believer is an extra advantage. If a Muslim beat you in class, you are a disgrace to heaven. I put my life on the line. It will never happen on me. This is how I challenge myself. Why? With the Holy Ghost, the Bible says you have the unction from the Holy Ghost. First John 20, 20 and you know Job 32 verse 8, there is a spirit in man. The inspiration of the Almighty give it that man understanding. David said, because 
because I know your word, because I have conversed with the study of your word, I have understanding that all my teachers, all my teachers, now by the time you begin to believe this reality and challenge yourself, in no time you will change to what you are saying. I didn't start the way you are saying. start the way you are saying right now. But a mindset hits me, just dropped on me as a light. And since then, I made a vow I will never fail in my life. Found the truth and I shouted, I will never fail. The Holy Ghost is an extra advantage. Don't let anyone cheat you. Do you know one thing about the Spirit of God? Come with Peter. When we talk about the Gospel of Grace, we'll teach on the Holy Ghost. If you understand Him, Jesus. Do you know your spirit don't forget anything? Your spirit can't forget. And your spirit doesn't sleep. That's why you dream at night. So when you forget anything, pray in the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, remind me, just pray. You'll be shocked it will carry you to that exact place. Many have sat with me. They've seen me do that as a practical. They watch now. But there is Shala Balagada. You will see two of us walking to the exact place as they see it. I, I like practicalizing the gospel. It works. Because your spirit doesn't forget you. Are we together? Hear his voice. Hear his voice. The challenge of most of us in life, why we don't pay the price to want to hear his voice, is because we have too many options. So I stop only train my children in the hard way. Sir, please, uh, uh, we'll be going for our NYC right now. They say we need four options. Which option should I choose? Go and pray. We tell you external people enjoy more than they. <laughs> One of my sons, you see, if it's somebody else that just come down and you attend to the person, for me, he can't attend to me. Jesus never performed any miracle on any of his disciples, yet he was healing others. Sister, I, I want to know whether she's the one or not. Technology has made it easier for you. There is love, meet, and love calculator. <laughs> Why stress me? Put of your name. Show how stupid you are, and it will give you that you are abnormal. How stupid you are! Very quickly, obstacle to hear God's voice. Okay, number one, sin. We see that in Isaiah 30 and verse 1 to 2, Isaiah 13, verse 2 and 3, and Isaiah 48, verse 17 to 18. Sin prevents one from enjoying the leading of the Holy Ghost. Why? Anything that defies your conscience and keep you in guilt obstructs God's voice. Anything that defies your conscience and keeps you in guilt obstructs God's voice. That's why many of us cannot hear His voice. The only voice you hear is the devil reminding you of the thing you just finished doing that is wrong. You come to pray. You say, Lord, I remind you of the sin yesterday I prayed about. Please, I'm still saying you should forgive me. <laughs> there is nothing you will do that you will come to God for forgiveness that will scare him. That blood is powerful enough. The Bible says it is a one and, once and for all sacrifice. I don't know why people find it difficult to accept God's forgiveness. You know, most of the times I feel it's because they find it difficult to forgive themselves and to forgive others. When you live in unforgiveness, you'll, be, you'll find it difficult to accept God's forgiveness. So you'll be feeling, ah, I should just say, I'm sorry, Lord, and that's all. Because you are trying to say, if you were the one, you will have slapped the person first. So you are judging God by your own personal traits. Are we together? You find it difficult to forgive yourself. 
Now, for instance, how will you say, I am a sinner from Adam? Did I know Adam? Did I meet him? And then they accept I'm a sinner. Now, one man paid the price and I say, You are righteous, but finally, he got to believe. Why do we like so much state of condemnation? The Bible says, Lest the devil take an advantage of us, we should not be what? Ignorant. See? For we know that we that are in God we cannot sin. Verse John 1. He said, however, because of the fact that we are still in the transformation of our soul, if we do sin, there is a God who is just and faithful to forgive. All we need to do is to confess our sin and receive his forgiveness by faith. By faith. What time a young man came to me? And says, I am paying the price for the things I did in the past. I say, you are very stupid. God is too big to have your time. That the only person he chooses to focus on right now is you. Now hear me. When it comes to justification in the gospel of grace, there is no consequence. How did I change my message? Maybe it's because I'm working on it. I'll help you. So a lady walked up to my office one time and says, I lost my womb. Because of the things I did. I said, no. It was not God that took your womb. It was the doctor that didn't do it well. Others are doing it and still not losing their womb. That's natural consequence, not God. Did you hear me? So if you are not careful, the devil can take an advantage and begin to manipulate your life that you will do nothing about it, thinking it is God trying to punish you. God is too big. One of my daughter sent me a post. I so much enjoy it. She said, you are not powerful enough to scatter God's plan for your life. What? It didn't take me off my feet. He said, you are not stronger than God to scatter his plans for your life. The plans will remain. It is you that left it. Any day you are ready, come back. You are not powerful. What he said, ancient of days, as old as you are, as old as you you will never change. Ancient of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, you will never change. Are we together? Sin, anything that defies your conscience or stroke the flow of God's voice into your life. Who tells you the Holy Ghost doesn't speak to a sinner? It's not true. It's a wrong gospel. In fact, the person the Holy Ghost speaks more to is a sinner. How will he get him convinced, convicted of his sin if he doesn't hear the Holy Ghost? What did you think made that man decide and say, I want to give my life now to Christ? Something spoke to him. He said, this is the true life. One time I told you, I asked God. What will happen to the Muslim man that was just born naturally into a Muslim home? Sometimes that's the way I, I work with God. I challenge him sometimes. Lord, you are unfair. Why? That's why if you put yourself in this state, you'll find it easily to win many people to God. The same way you were born to Christian, you think it's just going to tell you, stupid, come and change, change. You too, they burn you inside. But eventually they burn you into a Muslim home like that. Just look at how much Christian has sat on you. That's how it has sat on that young man. And I say, Lord, what will happen if you allow them to go to hell? It's unfair. One night in the middle of my sleep, he said, Son, I want to teach you something today. He said, Have you not read in my word when I said, This is the true light that lighted every man that cometh into this world, not some? He said, There is something I've done to every man that comes to make him know. He said, God, what? You are fair. God has an answer to all your questions. Are we together? Sin. So make sure nothing defies your conscience. Envy, hatred, anything that scatters your mind, obstructs the flow of his voice. That's why sometimes people bring certain discussion. I say, take it, please. Take it off me. I don't want to hear. See, if you understand the mystery of atmosphere, I taught you guys last week, you will guide it jealously. You will guide your atmosphere jealously. Please, 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 please. Anything that puts me under any form of pressure, 
You don't want it. That's why I refuse to do MMM. <laughs> I don't want How will I hear his voice? MMM is like, Jesus, it's discussing. It's yeah. yeah. Anything that puts me under any form of pressure, I don't want. So I can have a constant flow to hear his voice. The only condition why I will do MMM is that I've dashed them the money already. I made up my mind from the first day that this money will never come back to me. So, for adventure, it happened like that. I was, I was expecting it. Number two. Are we enjoying God? Are we enjoying God? Doubt. Matthew 21, verse 18 to 21. Mark 11, 23. Doubt. Lack of confidence in the Holy Ghost will rob you from benefiting His guidance. Doubt. What obstructs His voice? Doubt. And you know what brings doubt? When you are not dead to self. So, most of, so many of us are into reputation. Just spoke to you. Say, what if I do it and it doesn't come through? What will people say? You are not even careful of the one that said it to you. You are more into yourself. And when we come to church, for your glory... I would do anything. You see people crying. <laughs> now God said, take this step. One time I read the story of Gloria Copeland. She was teaching on 10 ways to heal the sick. She said when she went to one of the Asian countries in a crusade. And there were these priests, you know, Islamic priests and scholars and the rest of them. And the best way to get people in that kind of city to perform a miracle, don't preach a message. What did I say? Perform a miracle. Because some of now, Cardinal State Governor Elo said he has read the Bible 14 times. What do you want to preach? You are wasting time. Some of them have read the Bible even better than you. And so she shouted, Give me a blind, give me a deaf. If I pray and the person is healed, you priest will be the first to come. But she said instantly. See, the devil likes challenge. Instantly, five of the priests walked up to the altar and said, this is the blind, this is dead. If it doesn't happen, we kill you here today. And she closed her eyes. Look at the blind, look at the death in front of her. She closed her eyes. In her mind and the imaginations of her heart, the devil said, you are finished today. She said she didn't know when she shouted in the mic. Satan, hear me! If he doesn't open this eyes, I have nothing to lose. He has so much to lose. Did you see the crowd that will have followed him? Without prayer, instantly the eyes, pah, ears, pah. God loves to be bragged about. We are too much in reputation. What will they say? Because sometimes it can give you crazy instructions. Very crazy. I have been in the cra- I mean crazy instructions. When I was coming to start up this work, I had about 76,000 in my account. I, my first thing was there. The last Sunday service, I was asking, I will go out today now. Then, <laughs> you put all your money, you will drink. When the woman tells you that, you are finished. Crazy instructions. Number three. Emotional instability. Proverbs 4.23. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issue of life. Number four. Independent spirit. What deprives you of hearing God's voice? That's why, now hear me. No matter what I was saying this week, I'm just giving us foundation now. I'll say two more things and we are done for tonight. No matter what I do in this meeting, if you are not hungry to hear God's voice, your ear will not open. Did you know how I feel? Do you know the way I... Did you see the reply of Elisha when he didn't know of the death of the man? He said, how did God hide this from me? How? How do you feel when things happen to you unaware? Independent spirit. You can take certain decisions. 
those around me knows I don't do anything without praying. I say, wait, wait, wait. Let's hear God's words. Don't put me in any form of prayer. Because the way sometimes people come to you, when he's in the haste, we need to just make eh, 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 eh. calm down. Don't and most of the time I just find that there's no haste. We're the one that forms it. <laughs> you form the hastiness by force. Are we together? Please are we together? Independence spirit. I like to know his counsel on everything. I told you nothing is too urgent that you can't take his counsel about. Nothing is too urgent. Very quickly. Channels through which God speaks to us. Channels or vehicles through which God conveys his message. In my paper, yeah, I have it as found basic foundations to voice. Number one. Give me Psalm 49 verse 4. Psalm 49 verse 4. Psalm 49 verse 4. Said, I will incline my ear to a parable and I will open my dark scene upon the harp. Now I'm going to start sharing some secrets to us. Be very sensitive. Now, why sometimes you see me come to the meeting and I say, play on the strings for me. So you don't go and watch. I told you anything done in Christianity without understanding ends of a tradition. Play on the strings. The closest instrument to the strings is what? The, the, to the harp rather, is what? The strings. Now, every sound on this earth is a language. That's why in 1 Corinthians 14, the Bible says there is no sound without a meaning. Are we together? Let me show you something. Um, give me some 150. I pray I can place it. Let me just explain why sometimes we say, catch the cymbals. Catch the cymbals. You don't copy this or necessary. Please ask questions. Are we together? Some 150 verse 1. Let me show you. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Number two, verse 2. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise his next verse. Praise him upon the. Please go back. Praise him upon the sound of what the trumpets. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Next verse. Praise him with the tambrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instrument. There's something he does to God. Praise him with strange instrument. Give me the next verse. So it's why I say clash the cymbals. Praise him upon what? The loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sound of cymbals. Another version says praise, praise him on the clashings of the cymbals. So we didn't copy. Alright? <laughs> you must do it with an understanding. Are we following? The sound of God. So one way God conveys his message is through a sound. Sometimes in the spirit, what you just hear is a sound. And that sound could depict victory. That sound could depict war. That sound could depict danger. You just hear a sound. A sound, and why sometimes they use a sound is most of the times where you are in a position you are extremely distracted. So he needs the sound to get your spirit. Sometimes I'm walking, I say, Wait, I heard a sound, and then I can begin to put through other channels what he was saying by that sound. So sometimes the sound you hear from the sound, you can just feel the impression in your spirit. This is. Joshua said, I don't know. It's not looking like the sound of victory, but the sound of what? War. He speaks by sounds. Are we together? One thing conversant in the throne room is sounds. Give me Psalm 89 verse 15. Blessed are 
other people that know the joyful sound, they shall walk with God in the light of your countenance. Blessed are the people that know the joyful sound. So I can step into a meeting. Say, wait, the sound of the atmosphere is not correct. Blessed are the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk in the light of your countenance. Are we following? Sometimes you are just walking. What's your name? Huh? Olubi. Just, Olubi! You don't. Who called me? When we go deep, I'll show you what it is. The sound. Most of the times, what you do in that time. And you turn. You didn't see anybody. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Heaven is saying something. Are we following? Now you can also see that in 1 Kings 18 and verse 41. What did Elijah say he heard? The sound of what? An abundance of rain. He didn't hear rain. He heard what? Sound. Now, I will say this for the very first time. That's how I pick rain. You've been with me, right? I will be in the office. I say, wait. Rain wants to fall. You are not seeing anything, but in the spiritual realm, I'm hearing on my ears the drops in suffering. Most of them that oh, man, it's come. I say, Kai, rain is coming. Sometimes there will be nothing to show that it will rain. I think one of my the, the fellowship, the, the, their first day of their program, right? Was it the first day? The weather was okay. I say rain will fall so 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 time. I heard the sound. Following. So most of the times we pay so much attention to hear words, voices, without paying attention to what sounds. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Are we following? We see that also in First Chronicles 14 and verse 15, Psalm 47 and verse 5, Revelation 4. Jeremiah 50, 22, Jeremiah 51, 54, and Ezekiel 10, 5. Please, if you can't get the scripture, get the message. Number two, where God conveys his, his word. It's through what I call the emotions of God. Give me Psalm 22 very quickly on the screen. The emotions of God. The emotions of God. Now, you have just got it. Now, listen, look up. Have you woken up in a day? Nobody offended you. You, just, yet you couldn't discern it. As I say, when we teach it prophetic, it looks simple. That's why many people don't like to teach it. That's why if you are not careful, those of you that know how to pray very well, you'll be the very most easiest people to miss heaven. You know why? If you are extremely a prayerful person, you will pick more of his emotion very well. So that you are not careful. You just leave a prayer meeting right now. You start getting angry with everybody. What it is trying to tell you is rubbing his emotion on you. Telling you, you need to finish prayer. You have not done. Express that hunger in this place. So you start. I may not have experienced that. You start religious. You, like you finish five hours. You easily get angry with people. Give me some chance to on the screen. So sometimes he begins to rub. That's one way he communicates his message. Sometimes he wants to do something about a family issue. And all he needs is just a man that will travel in the place of prayer. So he drops the body. He rubs his emotion and his feelings on that man. And suddenly you don't know why you just became uncomfortable with that situation. Suddenly you are looking for a solution. I want to do something about this matter. What you have picked is the emotions of God. I did a message on that. I don't want to stay much. Please get my message. The emotions of God. How men carry spiritual burdens. Psalm 22. Now here, listen. Now, most of the times, one man that played with this a lot was the man David. Most of the things David did was that he rubbed into the emotions of God. Look up everybody. Let's finish Psalm 22 together. Fair. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? 
why are thou so far from helping me and from the worst of he didn't know he was prophesying Jesus on the cross he was just worshiping my God my God why are thou forsaking me so sometimes you can just be worshiping him you don't know you have caught into his emotion he that is joined with the Lord is one spirit that is why under this atmosphere my thoughts is what is a prophetic word at that point, I am what? When I'm intense like this, I am one spirit with him. Most of the things we do on stage, we pick it 99% by thoughts. Sanctified. You just grow in it through use. You have to exercise. Since you to discern. My God, why are thou forsaking me? Something that is to happen 400 and 50 years to come by the vantage point of just worship. Extremely prophetic because they are the closest to the seraphims. That's why most of the time they form more in meetings. Their spirit is extremely open. Are we following? If they know, they say it's mood swing. <laughs> Suddenly, nothing touches you, nobody offends you. You are just naturally not happy. He's trying to communicate, is the way God is speaking. He doesn't always say, My son, my son. He can just rub his emotions on you. That's why have you not seen sometimes you just feel unnecessarily worried before you know they call you that somebody sick at home? It's because you were not trained. I want to hear God's voice. I'm teaching you. Many of us experience it. Can you see now? You're already hearing since already you are here. You thought I want to teach you something big. You have been hearing. I just came to bring you to an understanding. You just find that you are bodily weak. But eventually, maybe somebody is sick somewhere. He drops the body in you. Please get my message on the emotions of God. I think it's, it's uploaded already, right? Please get the message. Let me not speak, spend much time on this. Number three God speaks through His word. One vehicle God communicates to man is through his word. Now one thing about God's word is that most of the times his word is not heard. It is received both by animate and inanimate objects. You hear in the Old Testament the prophets will say, and what God came, they didn't hear a voice. God's word is what? Received. Give me Psalm 107 verse 20. God's word is what? Received. So you can be sitting down speaking to some. I'm giving you the prophetic. As you hear his voice. I can be talking to this brother. Suddenly I feel a strange pain on my leg. He has a leg pain. Psalm 107. He said he sent forth his word. And it healed them of their diseases. Yet, the people that got the word didn't hear anything. So we can be in a meeting because of the understanding I have. I can look at a deaf man that don't need to hear me. And say, you false spirit of deafness. Be healed. Ears open. He didn't hear what I said, but the ear popped up. Because the word is received. Put by animate and inanimate object. He sent 
support his word. He sent it. So sometimes, for those that knows me a lot, you want a family member to be saved, come, by force. Lord, in 24 hours, I release salvation. The person will call you. Start crying. By myself, I just went to a church and gave my life. It's a grace and knowledge. He gave it to me as a gift. Yet the person I spoke about didn't hear anything. But his body structure had the ability to receive what I said. That's the word of God. So what I now do, when you see what the prophets were now doing, when I picked that sometimes in a meeting, and I said, okay, I'm seeing you with a leg, but you think I was hearing something talking to me. The word of God came. Did you see they heard the word? The word what? Came. Pray in the Holy Ghost. We still have the pastor's appreciation service on behind time. Are we enjoying God? Are we sure? Yes. Thank you. Give me Matthew 8, verse 8 to 10. Look at. Let's look at something. Matthew 8, 8 to 10. Very quickly. decision to go, which I've thought over another year, that your offering can provoke heaven. Your attitude to the kingdom can move heaven. When Jesus heard this, the Bible says he refused to go. But as soon as they told him he had built a synagogue straight. Any man that is addicted to the kingdom has the, the, the qualification to draw the attention of heaven. Even when heaven chose not to answer. Get my message on 10 things God holds in high regard. See, and I have regard for my covenant. That's number one. Go and check the scripture. I stretch them out for you. 10 things you see the Bible is saying, and God has high regard. High regard. And there's something we must put our attention on. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only. Send forth your word. I have an understanding of your scripture. To send it, it has the ability to travel. <laughs> See, when you have this understanding, a lot of you looking for hand by force, you don't have a need. It's because the church is not trained. It's because that's why many of us lose out so much of miracles. The Bible says it's called the gift of the workings of miracles. It is worked out. Recently, I gave one of my son a I said, Come. I just written on the paper. I woke up from sleep. I said, Stand up. Miracles are the product of spiritual laws. Go and do a research and come back. <laughs> That's how I train my children. Next verse, please. Okay, hold on. Fire me, man on the authority. Next verse. Just go to 10. Watch. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them, that followed very nice unto you have not seen in next verse and I say unto you that many shall come next verse next verse I, I need a place where his servant was healed go thy way that thou hast believed that, that it is. and his servant was healed in that self same hour yet the servant didn't hear Jesus speaking but the word traveled and the disease fell over the man was not there that's what the church, please get the message of spiritual DNA. That's what the church still don't understand. That we have the ability to send words that can travel. Are we getting blessed? So I don't need 
the deaf to hear what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's not true. The body parts. Did you see where David said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, including your liver. Continue, they have sound. What proves that a man is alive is sound. If your heart stops beating, see, you are a product of sound. I did it myself. I don't know, the book is not yet out. Absolute worship. You are a product of sound. Even your blood, they call it blood pulse. Do you know when they, what they check about you to show you are alive is your sound? That's why sound does something to a man. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Hallelujah. Number what are we? Number four. The voice of God. Now God's voice is heard. This is one. This is the one you hear people say, "I hear God saying to me." But for the word of God, it what it comes, and the word of God came. It came. Well, I hear God what saying to me. It's called the voice of God. It is what heard. That's the one you hear with your spiritual ears. And you know one good thing about the word, the voice? It has the ability to travel. It is mobile. That's why I can be here and I'm, I'm hearing God say something to you, to me about you. And I'm still going in, I'm hearing. The Bible says in Genesis 3 verse 8, the voice of God was walking in the garden. It has the ability to travel and follow me. <laughs> so the voice of God is what heard and it is mobile. That's one way God communicates with man through his voice. And I heard the voice of God saying, oh, the word of God came unto me. But the voice of God saying, speaks. Are we following? So the voice has the ability to travel. So it is not in the position of where I am to give you a prophetic word. I can walk anywhere in the meeting and still be talking to you. The voice is mobile. Are we together? Let me round up with two sections for today. I'm still in page two. <laughs> Boosting your spiritual sensitivity. Then I'll talk about, okay, let me just finish up three things. We'll, we'll run this very fast. Is that okay? I'll talk about boosting your spiritual sensitivity. Then I'll talk about how you distinguish God's voice from other voice. And then finally, I'll stop on how God speaks. There are about 17 I'm going to give us for today. Wow. Jesus. I plan to stop at page three. No, no. Now, what is, why do you need to boost your spiritual sensitivity? Because you can't hear in your flesh. I was in the spirit in the last day. Now, for those of us that are into engineering, we know what is sensitivity of an instrument? The ability for it to pick signal easily and speedily. That's why you buy laptop. That's one thing you check. To which extent can you pick signals? Networks, even your phones. 3G, 4G. It's sensitivity. We together. So you can boost your spiritual senses to pick his voice. Easily and what? Speedily. The difference between me and you is not anointing to an extent in, at, when it regards to hearing his voice. It's our sensitivity level. Are we following? So if you want to hear his voice easily, we will talk about distinguishing his voice and hearing his voice. You must learn to boost your what? Spiritual senses. I, I, I won't try to want to waste much time because I've preached the message on boosting your spiritual sensitivity, right? How many of us are listening to that message? Okay, good. Just a few. Please get the message. Boosting. Number one, meditation. Meditation. How do you boost your spiritual sensitivity so you can pick the signals of God easily and speedily? Number one, true meditation. Be a man and a woman that learns to meditate. That's why when you wake up from sleep, stand in your bed, just sit down. Did you find out that even the Muslim do these things? You will never see a Muslim man rush out of prayers. Before they go to pray, before they start their prayers, they first sit down. You don't say anything first, it's meditation. Then when they finish praying, just see them sit down there. Christians don't have understanding. And the painful thing is that the pride of the Christians will not make them learn. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 8, I think about school. 
He said, We claim we know, but we don't know as we ought to know. We don't. So, number one is true meditation. Give me Proverbs 24. Very quickly, Proverbs 24. Please check Genesis 24, verse 63. In Genesis 24, verse 63, when you go to Genesis, I think 26. Genesis 26, verse 1. The Bible says, And Isaac sowed in that same year and reaped a hundredfold. But when you go back to Genesis 24, verse 63, it tells you what he did. The Bible says he was in the field meditating. Bam! Revelation came. He didn't just went and sow like, try it. He was meditating and an inspiration dropped. And he sowed in that same year of famine and reaped a hundredfold. Why? He was a man that knows how to meditate. So it was in the evening. He went to the to the to the desert place and stayed there alone, meditating. Genesis twenty four. Please, why are you slow with your scriptures? Give me Proverbs twenty four thirty two, please, very quickly. Somebody there should be very fast. I'm totally behind time. Proverbs twenty four thirty two. Proverbs twenty four thirty two. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and I received what? Instruction. Did you see that? I saw and I considered it well. I looked upon it and I received instruction. This is one way we break with the, play, play, play with the prophetic. Some of you rush too much. Give me a book. Give me anything. Something that has a right of. Good. Let me teach you the prophetic. Watch. Let me show you what they call meditation. This is what makes people don't grow in the prophet. When the ability to hear God's voice. So a long, young man is praying. Most of the times we get them through prayers, right? You're praying. You just saw a slash of vision. And what you saw is holy. Right? You just saw this. But the only thing you were able to see at that point is what? Holy. You just, brethren, God said the people here are sinners. We have to pray for holiness. You see the childishness one of you do. Maybe you didn't even see holy, it's only Bible. You see, God said we must be staying with the word. <laughs> you must have it up rubbish. This is what kills young people. And to an extent, that's how prophetic word comes. <laughs> bit <laughs> by bit. He said, I saw. When I saw, what did I do? I, 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 I considered. I looked. I, I considered it what? Well. I said, wait, I'm seeing something. I looked at it and I received what? Instruction. I said, wait, I'm seeing something. I'm seeing a vision. Lord, show me. What was this? And I received what? Instruction. Meditation. Let me rush this. Are we following, please? So I'm training you how to be matured in it. In hearing God's voice. I wish I'd sing it on my time. Number two, stillness and confidence. Isaiah 30 verse 15. He said, in stillness and confidence shall be thy strength. In stillness and confidence. Still your spirit. Learn to still. You can't hear God in words. It is a stand still. Then you can only know that what? I am God. Stillness and confidence. Sensitivity. Ha! Thank you. So I'm not need to read some scriptures. I'll just say them. Number three, effective devotion. Mark 135, it was the custom of Jesus. That early morning you wake up to do your devotion. The Bible says in Isaiah 50, verse 4, He awakened me morning by morning and teaches me to know. Sometimes He just gives you a striking idea, it opens you up to the Spirit. Because nothing has occupied your day. That's the start of your day. That's why you can't joke with your devotion in the morning. Number four, pray and fasting. Pray and fasting. Number five, worship and chanting in the spirit boosts your spiritual sensitivity. Let me show you something I saw about David. Give me Amos 6 verse 5. You can also see that in Psalm 49 verse 4. Worship and chanting. Now watch. Hear about David. Watch. That turns to the sound 
of the vial. David was a chant. When I saw this, I shouted. What? He knows how to chant. Are we together? That's why, please, if you don't understand anything in the body of Christ, don't question it. Ask questions. Don't just say it's not true. Ask questions. Not everybody is as ignorant as you. Is that okay? Because that's a problem with people. Something you don't understand, just criticize. Ask questions. Please put me through. I need an understanding. Why do you people chant the spirit? Why do you sing songs, muttering? Alright? So worship boosts your spiritual sensitivity. Nothing draws God into a romance like worship. Number six, purity. Matthew 5 verse 8, he said, They that are pure in the heart shall see God. And that this calls for us to always plead the blood of Jesus upon our conscience. Anywhere the blood goes, the spirit will follow. There are three that are on the earth, the blood, the spirit, and the water. The water is the word. Anywhere the blood goes, the spirit will follow. Is that okay? Learn to sprinkle the blood of Jesus upon your heart. Put it from every wrong thought, wrong imaginations. Is that okay? The devil flings a wrong thought. Lord, I touch my heart. You mistakenly just on your phone, something pops off, you don't want to see. Lord, I purge my heart. Are we together? So you stay chaste and stay pure. Your spirit is not contaminated. Are we following? Alright? Partaking in the communion, Luke 24, verse 35. He said, and we knew him at the breaking of bread. When you partake in the communion, your eyes pop open. I told you the communion is not a tradition, it's a reality. He didn't say, this looks like my bread. He said, this is, yet he was alive giving them. We are just assuming, we are using Saba bread, <laughs> ostrich. He was alive, he didn't cut his body. He gave them and said, this is his body. And they didn't question him and say, you never die, you say, now your body. It's not symbolic, it's the communication of a life, it's a reality. They knew him at what? The breaking of bread. They knew him. The communion opens. Are we following? Please make sure we are taking note of the scriptures and we go home and study them for ourselves. <sighs> Concentration. That's one way you boost your spiritual sensitivity. Obedience. Obedience. Also, always stay under anointed atmosphere like this. Your sensitivity begins to come alive. When you stay on the anointed at both sides. Also, spend time with men with prophetic atmospheres. First Samuel 19, 20 to 24. We did that last week. The Bible says Saul sent messengers to go and catch David, and he was in the company and the atmosphere of Samuel. Immediately they went there. The Bible said they were prophesying by just coming into a man's atmosphere. So spend time with people that have such kind of atmosphere, it will drop on you. Also be in the spirit. Be in the spirit. And one way you be in the spirit. Now, let me just help. One way you be in the spirit. I know most people have asked me, how do you be in the spirit? I was in the spirit in the last day. Alright? And I thought it was the last day. The last day is equivalent to carry us moment. Anytime the agenda of heaven is about to be fulfilled on the earth. That period is called what? The last day. Please, is that okay? How do you be in the spirit? Most times by worship and praying the Holy Ghost. What it simply means to be in the spirit is to make your spiritual more active than your flesh. Simple. To make sure your spirit man is what? More active than what? The flesh. So how do you do it? Engage it with spiritual activity. Be more in the spirit. Are we together? Now, when I talked about vehicles through which God communicates, the voice of God, the word of God, I left two behind. 
I'll teach it in part two. Is that okay? I'm going to teach us about similitudes. Similitudes. He spoke, he said, when, when me um, and Aaron spoke negatively about me, Mo, Moses and God summoned them, he said to others, I speak in dark speeches through similitudes. But for Moses, I speak to him face to face. And then one other way is two pictures. I'll deal with that. What is similitudes? Let me tell you how it works with me. Similitudes. I can just be coming right now. Let me teach you some things that we do that some of you don't know. I can just be coming right now. Maybe I go to the stage now. I'm, I'm, maybe I'm ministry. I go to the stage. I pick my handkerchief. And I say, Dick. And so there's that. God said, somebody's about to give you. I didn't hear it before. I needed to act what I acted first before you speak. That's me to do. Where sometimes what you are giving is just an action. How you put it? Sometimes I can be in the pulpit ministry to somebody. I just say, you stand up. I, did, I don't have any word for the person. You just say I should take the person to stand up. Are we still together? I can't really cover so much. I'm totally outside of time. Totally. When am I supposed to start? Stop creativity team. 7.30. Should we stop here? Right? So I can go to the pastor's appreciation service. Okay. Also, let me just give us two more on how to boost your spiritual sensitivity. Always pray for an open door to the spirit. Always pray for an open door to the spirit. But John said, I was in the spirit on the last day. And I heard a voice say to me, come up either. And suddenly a door was opened in heaven. A door was what? Opened. So always pray for what? Open door. And finally for tonight, true use and practice you boost your spiritual sensitivity. Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 13 to 16. True use and practice. True use and practice. Please don't be scared to make mistakes. Every great prophet you see in scripture made a mistake one time. Isaiah, he said, who will go for us? He didn't know it was a question they were asking Jesus. Who will go and die for man? He thought it was, they were asking him. He said, and I say, here am I, send me. And they didn't send him. He came again, he just stood up one day. He was just in, enjoying prophetic. He said, unto us a child is born. He didn't know they didn't born for him. <laughs> so, so another dispensation to come. The Bible speaking about Samuel. He said his word never fell to the ground. Yet that guy came to a point. He saw Eliab. He said, this must be the Lord's anointed. He said, eh? You miss him. I can't go on. I can pick all the prophets and show you that they made a mistake. All. All, including Malachi. All. And they were still called prophets. The best of a man is still a man. The best of what? A man is still a man. That's why please don't be quick to criticize men of God. Sometimes God can do it to humble them. Sometimes God in his own infinite mercy knows what he's doing. You can predict and say this thing will happen. You heard him clearly. He spoke to you and he chose to do something about this. And you know funny enough is that the Christians are not I don't know what's wrong with us. I come and I tell you I see an accident coming. What's your expectation? If it didn't happen so you not tell me I saw wrong thing. That's the most that to happen. When it now happen now, you say, why must you always see negative things and they will still happen? We, we are just not serious with our life. If we check ourselves, all of us know we are not truly really sincere. We are not. When I give you a word, it's for you to do something. Do you know you have the ability to avert it? Why did you see that good luck? Jonathan, vote was changed in Nigeria. After God said to many mighty men whose voice we believed, why was his voice changed? When we found out that the, the, the button was tweeted. Now hear me. Anything that is the th- a thought in the heart of a Christian is an incense to heaven. The quantum of incense was so much, even heaven had no option than to respect the choice of a man. Why? On this earth realm, man is powerful than God. Did I say on the earth, man is powerful than God and an angel? That's why when they, when Jacob said, You can't go and self to bless with the angel, couldn't do anything. Why couldn't he run? In this jurisdiction of man, man is the most powerful being. So that even God cannot come into the atrium without the interference of a man and say, Oh God, intervene in this issue. She said, No, I can't come. Heaven always asks, We sought for a man to open the scroll. But it has to do with the word of a man. 
this. Are we together? Don't be quick to judge people. I beg you. I don't do that. The man said, you didn't have to Why? Why? And you will never see imam, an imam can say such. It won't happen. You never see it. Only Christians know how to spread bad news about each other. Share. Share on Facebook. Share. WhatsApp. Share. You will not put the title on the top. The rise of false prophet. That's your own destiny. The assignment God gave you on it. Please, are we together? I beg you. This is how wide some of us, you will never discover your assignment when you are disturbing other people in their place of assignment. You can't discover your own. So I want to know what God wants me to do. The man doing his own, you are disturbing him. How will you see your own? Whatever a man so. Don't disturb yourself with other people's destiny. Are we together? You are not a judge. No, God didn't make you. He didn't, he didn't do that, that function. Me and you will stand before him. So who gave you the criteria to judge me? In spite of the fact that I'm still alive, you can't even miss the heaven and I make it at last. Yes. It's not the cross that thief made heaven. If it, some of us have judged him on the earth, he's a thief. I see him on the cross, it's finished. Yet he said, Today you'll be with me. You are not God. That's why I said we no longer see men from the world's point of view. We see them through the eyes of Christ. We see what they can become if they encounter Jesus and not what they are. See, see the prostitute. No, I see what she can become if this one can truly just encounter God. That's why when I speak to her, I find it easily to convert her than you. Why? The first thing that leads you to a man, the first thing that communicates with each other is spirits and fragrance. So no matter what I say to you, once my spirit has already dispelled you, you will never hear me. Leave it prophetic. <laughs> let me stop. Let me stop. Okay, oh, very quick. Let me rush this. How to distinguish God's voice from other voices? Number one, God's voice is an inspiration from God, it inspires you. We see that in Isaiah 7, verse 15. Isaiah 750. Let me see something there. God's voice is an inspiration, it inspires you. Number two, his instruction agrees with the Bible. So the voice of God will never contradict the Bible. Acts 17, 11, 1 Thessalonians 5, 5, verse 19 to 21. God's voice will always agree with what? The Bible. So if you hear anything speaking to you and it's opposing what the Bible says, you are not hearing God's. Please, are we together? Number three. Good. Let me comment on this. Okay, let me leave it last. Number three. God's voice has a lasting effect when he speaks and is fresh as ever. God's voice has a lasting effect when he speaks. Number four. God's voice is accompanied by unspeakable peace. Act 16 verse 6. When you do anything and you feel troubled, watch it. Watch it. God's voice is accompanied by unspeakable peace. Number five. God's voice does not condemn. Any voice that condemns you is not God's voice. Any voice that condemns you is not God's voice. God's voice does not condemn. It appeals to you. It convicts you. It tells you, brother, this thing is not right, it's wrong. God's voice now that you are finished, you are dead. Are we together? I read a scripture three days ago that changed my life. Do you know the scriptures? John 3 16. It changed my life. I was doing a study. I told you I'm teaching next next year, six months, the gospel of grace. Alright? And it changed me. For God so loved the word. Jesus. That word changed me. The verse 17 is what struck me more. He said, For the Son was not sent to condemn this word, but to do what? To save it. What is your own assignment and mandate? To condemn the word. <laughs> Can you see many of us are giving ourselves a calling they didn't call us? 
he said he was sent. Please, I need a screen. He was sent not to what? Condemn this word, but to do what? To save it. This is how you minister to the sinner. This is how you minister to the lost with a heart of love that you want them to get what? Saved. I told you what first leaves us to communicate is what? Fragrance from our spirit. The Bible says we have fragrance of Christ. Second Corinthians 4. I'm telling you. So why people get easily converted when they come to me? It's because of what leads my heart to them is love. I just love that. I say, don't worry. You've done this, you've done don't worry. Relax. Relax. What a sinner wants to hear is that God can save him. That's the only thing that will convict him, the sinner. That God can save you, irrespective of what you have done. Any other gospel will do nothing. Are we together? So God's voice doesn't condemn. It corrects you. It convicts you. And it gives you hope for the future. It tells you, brother, this thing you are doing is wrong. If you change, God can turn your life. It can make you a brand new person. That's his voice. So if you live in guilt, that's the voice of the devil. Or the voice of God. Are we following? Number six. God's voice is not pushy. Send this message to 10 people or die. Then you... You are cra- send it to my phone and see. Send it. Try. It's a demonic message. <laughs> if you say, how many of you have gotten good luck? Say, if you send, you receive 10 good lucks today. <laughs> see your head. <laughs> you are playing cha cha indirectly. Spiritual one. Please don't send those kind of demonic message. Are we following? Now hear me. In the gospel of grace, in the gospel of the New Testament, there is no cause attached to any disobedience. I don't know why I'm, pu- I'm pushing a message for next. I'll tell you what is attached to it. What did I say? There is no cause attached to any disobedience. What happens to you is that fellowship is broken. Simple. There's no cause. So I curse you. You will never hear it in the New Testament. Go and read it. Fellowship is just what? Broken. And once fellowship is broken, what happens? The devil is giving room to come. But in the old, whether fellowship breaks or not, he still costs you for doing this. <laughs> Leave it next year. Now, finally on this. Wow. Please. Pastor's appreciation team. Help me, eh? Borrow me 20 more minutes. <laughs> Alright? And that means nobody will be permitted to go after I'm done preaching. You must wait for the pastor's appreciation because you took my you took their time. Alright. Number seven on how to distinguish God's voice. I'm going to say this with a practical section. God's voice carries authority and power behind it. Wait. Doris, here's the lady I spoke to, your friend after last week meeting you brought. There she miracle also. She didn't come? Is she around? Stand up. God's voice carries what? Authority and power behind it. Now, she came with her friends after the meeting on, on, on Friday, last week. And I was talking with a friend. And I said, you are an evil girl, right? And she said, yes. And I said something to God. Lord, because I found out the way she was. Oh, oh it's right. I said, God, give me a name. So I just stood. Three names came to me. Anambara, Abia, Enugu, fast. Fast. I just heard it. Anambara, Abia, Enugu. As fast as you can take micro speed. God's voice. <laughs> Those who threw you. <laughs> I've been able to what? Exercise to design. So you just thought I heard only one name, Abi. This is what happened. How did I know the one I called? What state did I call for her? I said, you're Abia, right? I didn't ask. I said, you are Abia state. Yes. His voice carries authority. Now, most of the times, you're in the prophetic. And you heard the plash of ten names. One way you discern God's voice is to check which one carries authority and power. Which one keeps coming continuously. Let me tell you why. I will tell you a secret. Don't tell the devil I said to. The devil is not consistent. He says, Abia, the next time you say Nugu, when 
God says Abia, next one, you still say Abia, next one, you say Abia. This is what I taught you. <laughs> Hundred days, you might not get it. But that's why I pray you don't abuse this meeting. I told you people, we don't like teaching it. I know why. I drafted God to teach this meeting. <laughs> Please, are we together? <laughs> that's why I picked it. As I said, don't tell the devil what I said. The devil doesn't know how to state one thing. The Bible says the father of all lies, John 8:44. He was lying from the beginning. <laughs> He's not a consistent man. So if he says Abia, what will he say next? He will call on that one again. Just to get you confused. But Jesus will keep saying the same thing. His words carry power and authority behind it. So, Abia, Enugu, and sit down. Abia, Enugu, Anambra. Abia, Enugu, Anambra. Abia. Abia. You are from Abia. <laughs> Hallelujah. My Nabi photo now. You heard it? I dropped my thing. How God speaks. How God speaks. Very quickly, let me rush that. I'll stop anywhere I can. Please, are we promising me we'll stay for the pastor's appreciation service? Right? Else I will stop now. So they can continue their service. At least they are still within time. Are we promising me we'll stay? Nine, we are, we are done. I'm not going to exceed that. But just give me like 15 more minutes. Is that okay? Let me rush certain things. How God speaks. Number one. Now, why you must trust the voice of God is that God's voice will only, always lead you to good, not evil. Like I said, his ways might be confusing, but his motives and intentions are always poor, the pure. Now, sometimes, why God might come in a way we don't expect is that he offends our heart to reveal the state of our hearts to us. This is the oh God, you spoke to me in nine A's. I got five A's. Lord, I will not serve you again. He just showed your heart to you. Did you pick what I said? Sometimes he offends our heart to reveal it to us. You that was kind in the service, I will do anything for you. He just showed you a line. That's why I check fellowships. This semester they pray me and say, This semester, 5.0. That's the semester people have the highest number of academic issues. Because he just find a platform to ah, time. I, I've seen opportunity to test them now. Then he begins to touch it. You know what? Their faith is high on him. So he begins to touch. Pa, pa, pa. Oh boy. Oh no, something went wrong. Lord, where are you? I'm teaching you something that can make you enter into an academic rest. Number one. God speaks through his word. This is the ultimate truth through which God speaks. He might speak in every other way I will list. But every other way he speaks must be judged by his word. Are we together? Prophets say you have to go and bathe inside a river. The first prophet, his word is not there. So you have to miss concussion, put red candles and yellow. The first prophet. He said, mm, I enter somewhere. And they say, I should go and marry somebody's wife. Hey, first prophet. No matter where that, any other route through which God speaks, it must be judged by what? The written Bible. If he says anything contrary, I told you, God is consistent in nature. If he says anything contrary to the written word, that's the voice of the devil. And I tell people, one easiest way to hear God is to be conversant with his word. You know I talk. can see a friend of mine in darkness and hear and say he's the one there. Even in darkness. When you read the word of God a lot, you'll be conversant with the nature of how he talks. So any voice, his voice comes, it'll be easy for you to pick. And know God is the one talking. Please are we together? Please study the word. Study the word. When I did the draft for the school of ministry. And I wrote, how many chapters did I wrote daily? You must study. 20 people shouted, He! They are not serious. <laughs> you don't know what you are looking for. Are we together? Study the word. Get conversant. Conversant with his word. You will know how he speaks. Number two. 
on the altars of prayer and fasting you can pick his voice god speaks on the altars of prayer and fasting fasting sifters voices it sifts that noise from the voice of god so when you fast you find it easy to pick his voice you see that in, in abaku 2 verse 1 to 2 he said i will stand upon my toe and watch the toe there means the altar of prayers and hear what he has to say and see what he has to say rather are we together number three through people give me proverbs 11 14 through what people one time we did a sandboard for the shop somebody came and come. i was inside my office he was in the shop somebody came and complained and this thing is supposed to be like this and this and this i didn't say anything the next day again somebody came oh, this thing is nice but it's supposed to be i just came out from the office i said we don't need god to speak again go and change it <laughs> That's why I'm a man that always listens to feedback. God speaks to what? People. Are we together? If one person says something about you that you need to change, it might be false. But if at least 50 people say it, until change. Are we together? He said, no, it's all of that. It's we everybody hate you at the same time. Are you a witch? Let's look at Proverbs 11, 14. He speaks to, in fact, this is one of the major ways God speaks to people. Do you know, now listen, watch. I can be, I can, let me give you an example. Okay. Where, where no counsel, the people fail, but in the multitude of counselors, there is what? Safety. For instance, I'm just, I'm trying to decipher into doing a business between real estate and stock. On Monday, somebody comes to my office to visit me. And he says, Sir, our real estate business is good. Would you like to do real estate? This, this, that. <laughs> we didn't discuss. I just listened to what they were saying. I was going on, passing through the school. I'm giving an example, okay? I came out from my office. I was passing through the school. Just let people by my side discussing. Have you tried a real estate? <laughs> I'm teaching you how to decipher. God is speaking. Some people. Especially when you are what? A prayerful person. He can use people to talk to you. Can you see how I picked that God is speaking? He began to position people to comment on that matter that concerned me. We didn't discuss. We didn't plan it. He just called that matter. That matter. That matter. Sometimes I have people come to my office and I say, hey, I'll need you to do this. He say, that, sir, that is why I came to your office to tell you about it. Uh-uh. I don't need to hear again. Are we following? God speaks through whom? People. Now, through the voice of mentors and fathers, we saw that in Isaiah 30, verse 20 to 21. He said, you will not take thy teachers away from thee. But you will hear their voice saying what? This is the way to go. God speaks through, through mentors and fathers. You can just say, Father, come to you and say, I'm thinking you should do like this. God can speak to you. Alright? So be sensitive. Two tapes, messages, books. Especially of people you have a great regard for and you are connected to. Two tapes, messages, and books of people especially you have a great regard for and you are connected to you, his voice can come you are just listening to the message bah! and inspiration can drop on you do this do that two tapes books and messages of people you have extreme regard for and your heart is genuinely what connected to their heart Number six, through divine circumstances. We saw that in Numbers 22, 23 to 35. Through divine circumstances, God can speak to you. You must be watchful. Alright? Be watchful and sensitive. Divine circumstances. Certain things will just happen. You can testify his voice. I know that God doesn't want me to take this step again. Are we following? 
to divine circumstances. I am still repeat this in part two, so let me rush them. So I'll just have something today. Number seven, through retreats, conferences, and anointed meetings. You can do you know you can be in this meeting beyond what I'm preaching. God is saying something else to you. That's why if you come to service and you think the job, they are not connected, you are not serious. You, when you are come, what did you say? I'm going to the house of who? God, not a man. I'm going to his presence. When you come there, you should be more conscious of God, not even the best you are seeing up here. Meetings, you can be there, an inspiration will drop, an idea will drop, a solution will drop, a direction will drop on you through conferences and retreats. Are we together? Number eight, through visions, dreams, and trances. What is vision? A short flash, you just see a picture, very short, just flash on your face. God can speak to you. What is a trance? A trance is a sudden caught up into sleep to receive the vision. You are just here suddenly. Maybe just father, you went off. You saw something in your sleep. That's a trance. And then through dreams of the night, I will show you one that is very peculiar to me for this meeting. Give me Genesis 31, verse 10 to 12. Meanwhile, Job 4 13, we can see that there. Job 4 13, Numbers 24, verse 4. Numbers 24, verse 4. Job 33 verse 14 to 17 Job 33 verse 14 to 17 Acts 27 verse 23 to 24 Paul said The angel of the Lord Whose I am and whom I saw Appeared to me Give me Genesis 31 verse 10 Please look up I want to show you something here Now we saw The story of, of jo- J- M- Jacob He told Laban He said Laban the best thing, wages I want is that let's do it this way the sheep that is striped will be mine right? the one that is pure white should be what? yours the only story we read I know most of us are conversant with it that he now took a stick right? and now stripes on them and kept them in the well I want to show you that he got a vision Genesis 31 please look up and it came to pass at the time that the conceived that I lifted up my eyes and saw in what a dream and behold the rams which lived upon the cattle were strict it was not the stick a spiritual ram was released did you see that he said they mated with the cattle oh, Jesus you didn't catch what did you catch what I said so you were seeing a stick that's what we call formative prophecy. A native doctor picking a toy baby and say it is you. You are not the one actually. But it's what we call formative prophecy. You will never work in creativity if you don't know how to do formations. Leave it some other time. I, want, I learned this story of this great servant of God, Prophet Kubus Varesba. One time, one of his daughters called him and said, Papa, my mom and dad were traveling through a ship and the, the, the ship sank and they couldn't find them. They've searched there three days. They can't find them. He was playing in the, in the beach with his friend. No prayer, nothing. He said, tell the air pilot, the search team to go back. They will see them hanging on a, t- on a stick in the water. Three days they've searched that spot. After 30 minutes, she just called her. Papa, Papa, they found my parents. And his friend was, Wow. You are such a powerful man of God. How did you see that? He smiled. He said, I didn't see it. I formed it. <laughs> I, I will teach you some other time. Formative what? Prophecy. Why would they carry a toy baby and hit the neck and it will affect you? There are too many things we are ignorant of in the body of Christ that the devil is taking advantage of. Too many things. That's why I say I can pick an handkerchief right now and bless it and say, go and place it on the sick. On the way going, your friend says, sweating, you give him to clean his face. Yet a native doctor will give you a black, dirty sand. Nobody wants to touch it. Leave it all. Leave it. Why? The church of God. We need to grow. We must grow into maturity. Make up your mind. Lord, I want to grow in my work with you. Are we together? So 
I'll, I'll teach us some formative prophecy some other time. Okay. One time, let me just do one other story. One time, one of my friends in ABU, they had an issue with a lecturer. The lecturer was troubling them. Are we together? The lecturer was troubling them and vowed that he will fail one of them except they do one or two things. You know what they do, did? At night, five of them gathered themselves in a the room, took a check and do a round cycle and invoke the spirit of the man into that cycle and took him and flogged the hell out of that man. The next morning, all over the man's body, beatings, he was admitted dead. Formative. When I'm teaching about the three spiritual eyes, I'll teach us from what they did. How you can invoke the spirit of a man. What the native doctors know. So you see yourself in a dream, appear before a shrine. You are not dragging. You know, you know some foolishness we do. So I know it's because we are not taught. You now wake up from sleep. He said, I, I, I got victory. I woke up. Young woman, young man, you were in front of a shrine physically. What was invoked was your soulish eye, which is your dream. You appeared, it was not. <laughs> I mean, you appeared in front of a shrine. You were invoked. You don't wake up. I woke up. <laughs> I love, I love. Leave the song, please, for now. My time. The message has taken. I'm still in page two. <laughs> That's in page. Maybe we'll take this series for a year. Are we getting blessed? Okay. Number nine, through inner witness, voice, feeling, and divine signal. We see that in Acts 27, verse 10. Through inner witness. For instance, this is how I know people lie to me. How many of you were here when I was in this campus? You knew me there when I was around. You were very close. You were around, my, around me. I had an emblem. Nobody lies before. You are not capable. You are not strong enough. You are not a liar enough. You can't. Ask them. You can't. You just can't. And sincerely speaking, in all of the cases I've dealt with, I didn't hear anything saying the person is lying. Are we following? What I work with at that point is just inner witness. If you lie to me, I'll just feel uncomfortable that you're lying. But if you're telling me the truth, I just feel peace. Sincerely, that's how it works. That's why I say some of the things you do is not unbeating. It's just because through use, we've been able to what? Exercise it. When you are talking to me and you are lying, I'll feel troubled in my spirit. But once you are saying the truth, I just feel peace. Just for peace. So true inner witness. Is that okay? Because the devil is not an agent of peace. So one of the true signs of divine insight is what? Peace of mind. One of the true signs, true test for, for, for good judgment is what? Peace of mind. There are times you might not hear an audible voice. Are we together? There are times you might not see a picture, a vision. But you walk with what? Your peace. I just feel peace about it. That's why I tell some of my children. You see a lady you like? Come and tell me. Don't lie. I saw a stick standing. You call the girl you want to marry a stick. You leave my office. You know, sometimes you people, you just come to the office to impress me. You don't know. I don't tolerate lies. I don't like it. Sir, I don't just know. I just feel she's the one. Is it difficult? Sir, I just feel peace about it. You want to make me happy? See, in the dream of the night. <laughs> Alright? Number 10. Through a still small voice. Through a still small voice. Seeming as a thought with a voice. Have you sometimes had a thought where it's like it or somebody talking in your spirit? True what is too small. That's why sometimes some of us say, ah, and something told me, oh, true is still small. Voice. As what? A thought with what? A voice. Most of the times it comes, that still small voice comes as what? A thought. But yet that a voice. Number 11. 
through sanctified thought and imaginations, not preconceived thought. Philippians 2 13, Job 4 13. I will, I will explain on this. Through sanctified little thoughts and imaginations. Now hear me. God speaks 90% through this mode. Your imagination is where God impresses his pictures. When we see in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 to 18, Paul prayed, he said that the eyes of your understanding may be what? Enlightened. If you check the original Greek, the on word understanding there means, means what? Imaginations. Now, that's why I said, not preconceived thought. Let me tell you sometimes how I give people prophetic words. As a minister, I think I've tried tonight. To make it simple, don't abuse it. Come. Come. Maybe we are just talking, we're just talking and we're chatting, we're just greeting. Alright? Suddenly a thought just come to me that her mother will be sick. I'll tell her to pray that. I see sickness coming for your mom. I didn't plan it. Sit down. I'm teaching you prophetic. Through what? Sanctify little thoughts and what? Imaginations. Not preconceived. Meaning the one you have cooked. Mm -mm, it just came. Especially when you are in an high intense spiritual atmosphere. One time I was listening to one of the greatest seer. That's Bob Jones. If you have watched that video. Now one other seer, Patricia King, asked him. Bob Jones, do you see pictures? He said, no. Most of them are just taught. 90% of what I give. That's a guy that gave prophetic word. From when he died to when Jesus will come. What will be happening early? 90% just thought. <laughs> Are we together? Sanctified thought. You didn't what? Plan it. It just came. Is God impressing it in your what? Image center, which is your imagination. That's the screen of the spirit. That's why you need to purge it most of the times. And not get yourself hooked up with phonographies and the rest of them. So that the devil doesn't occupy. Don't you see how you see phonography? You watched it last 10 years. How do you remember it again? The devil played it again on that screen. You see it. How do you do something even? You don't even question who spoke to you. How do you pick the voice of the devil easily? Are we together? Little thoughts. Not preconceived thoughts. 90% that's how we pick prophetic words. Are we following? Let me just give us three more. I'm done. Through the voice of our conscience. Through the voice of our conscience. Romans 2.15 Through the audible voice of God. Sometimes I can hear God speaking to you audibly. My son. Hebrews 12, 19, we see that there are two prophetic utterance. Three, two prophetic utterance. Now, however, prophetic utterance, most of the time, should just be a confirmation of what, what God has impressed in your spirit. It's not to wow you. Alright? I even tell you, sometimes when people tell you something that you don't even know at all, to me, most of the times, I feel you are not working with God again. The two major points of the prophetic call or anointing, number one, is to give you a confirmation of what God is impressing in your spirit. Maybe you are, you, are, you are sensing God wants you to take this direction. And you come to a meeting and I give you a word. It's just to make it what they confirm. It's not to wow you. Are we following? That's one of the first major purpose. Most of the times, I feel you are having an issue with your work with God. Because if God can talk to you, why must he always be talking to you through somebody else? Many of us like it. Whoa! Are we together? Please let me give us two more. Two perceptions. Acts 10 34, Acts 17 22. Two perceptions. You just perceive in your spirit. Two perceptions. Jesus is faithful. Two perceptions. Acts 10 34, Acts 17 22. Acts 27 verse 10 Acts 28 verse 26 
number 17, 16, through the vocal and revelatory gift. What's the vocal gift? The gift of tongues, the gift of the interpretations of tongues, and the gift of prophecy. And then the revelatory gift through the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and the discerning of what? Spirit. God can speak to you through any of them. Finally, for tonight, as we rise up to our feet, through a knowing, you just know something, you don't know how. You just know it. You just know something. Some of us, most of us operate like this. You just know something, you don't know how you know it. Through a knowing. Mark 7 18, Luke 6 8, John 2 24. Please rise up to your feet. Now listen to me. The words tonight came with an impactation of the reality of that word. Hear me. I want to say something very sensitive. One important thing that will help you to walk in the prophetic. Everything you see on this earth is governed by spiritual laws. Are we together? And even in the prophetic and in the ability to hear God's voice, there are laws. I will teach you. That's where I will start from the next series. I don't know where to come from. Next week I will start a series on the rise of Savior of Zion. The part one, I will use it to expose the ten mysteries about the Antichrist God shared to me. Ten things about the Antichrist you need to know. And we'll continue back to we'll start the series next week. It's going to be bloody. It's like up time to come. So you see how the Antichrist system operates. And it's taking an advantage of the HRM and of the children of God. And yet we are ignorant. I think in part one, I'm going to expose how to identify false prophets. Alright? I'm going to try as much as I can to make two of it. So we have an understanding. Now the way we are raising a church is that if you tell me you are going for a program so I will not be scared. Why? You are heavily trained. I should be scared of my member. You are not a correct man of God. You have not done your own work. Anywhere I can send you. And when you go there, by the vantage point of what I've done, you can decide. I said, this is a wrong spirit. Are we following? He said, so I will not be as big tossed by winds of every... Okay. Alright? Now, there's one law in the prophetic I want all of you to know tonight. Please pay attention to what I want to say now. I'll show us something you don't know before. This is my gift to you for tonight for pastor's appreciation service. I'm still going to come up after the pastor's appreciation service to bless us and speak a word of our life. But hear me. There's one spiritual law that helps you to discern God's voice easily. It's called the law of focusing and rapt attention. And I will show you three scriptures in the Bible. The law of what? Focusing and rapt attention. Now watch. If I dial your number, won't it ring? Does it mean you hear what I'm saying? What do you do? You need to pick my call. This is the missing link most of us have. Sometimes when I speak to people in the office and I'm talking with them, Lord, show me about this person. As they are talking to me, my ear is to hear what he has to say. Yet you have gone off. You already know what the person is saying. Yet you called the law of what? Focus. And rapt attention. You called. You said, Lord, show me something. And you have lost consciousness of the fact that something can come. Already con concerned with what you are doing. Exodus chapter 3. Now, the Bible says, Come. Just come. You see this young man? If I sit down, right now, immediately I saw him, I can tell him his age now. As I just told him to come. <laughs> you know why? It's still the law of focusing. If I want to pick a word for him, all I need to do is to put my attention on him and say, God, give me a word for him. And I stay put. Or get something. And most of the times, I've told you how it can come. Through what? Perception. Sanctified thoughts imaginations, right? I've told you always, it can come. 
Sit down. The Bible is, um, just go. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 3, God decided to send a seraph, a seraphim to manifest in form of fire in the burning bush. It wasn't God burning. Alright? It was a seraphim. They are called the burning ones. Angelic part 2. Please get that message. The Bible says, and God now stood there. He didn't say anything. He was watching. Moses was passing. God didn't say anything. The Bible says, but as soon as he turned aside and looked, God spoke. As soon as he what? Turned aside and looked, God spoke. So sometimes in a meeting, if I'm not even picking God's voice, and I decide those I want to give a word of knowledge, I can just say, you stand up, you stand up, you stand up. I will pick for the three of them. Once I set my eyes on them. It's called the law of what? Focusing. One time when Samuel was going to the prophetic, he heard a voice. He didn't know who was calling. He went to meet the prophet. The prophet said, go sleep. He came back for the third time. The prophet said, just speak one word. Speak, Lord. You must receive the call. So most of us are not paying attention. One of the meetings I had, I think when we used the zinc house, we had a meeting. I think we taught on the blessings of a father that day. I said, everybody stand up. I'll just pray over your life and I'll go home. It's not like just feeling a stirring in my spirit. I said, wait, let's provoke the anointing. Easily and without stress. And I said, everybody lift up your hands and we begin to worship. I was singing. Immediately, I just saw two people hold hands. I think that was Sister Shadi and somebody. Immediately, I saw them hold hands. God said, tell everybody to hold their hands. I just said, everybody hold your hands. Everywhere. Everything speaks to us. But you would think I heard a voice. Why? Focus. Concentration. I need something. I will stay on it in case it comes. Let me give you one scripture. Give me first Samuel. Very quickly, please. Let me do that scripture and I'll end tonight. First Samuel chapter 9, verse 17. Just watch, please watch the scripture. First Samuel 9 17. How to hear God's voice. Let's read together. So you understand the law of focusing. And when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said, Why didn't God say anything before he saw him? That's why sometimes I had to set my eyes on you. Do you find that, that most prophets, most of the time they want to give prophetic word, they begin to walk into the congregation? He said, When Samuel set his eyes on Saul, the Lord spoke. The Lord focusing and rapt attention. So, Lord, give me a word for him. As he's talking, I'm not concentrating much on what he's saying. As waiting to hear something, which most of the times can come as what is sanctified thought and imagination. An impression in my spirit. But you lose is a lot of it. Please, did we understand what I just said? The law of focusing. Secondly, how does this law works? When you see something in a vision, stay to it. Now, I can, you can, I can, I can pray for you right now. You play the prophetic, and I will still prophesy better than you. Why? One is true because of experience and use. Secondly, is because of maturating the prophetic. We point. Let me give an example. Two people come, come. You've been on me since the service. I'll minister to you today. Come, two of you, come. There's something limiting people in your family I need to pray for. Just stand. Watch. Please, everybody, look up. Um, Okay. Let's use this. Tell me the things you can see here. Ministry, ministry, aka Spirit Way and Embassy Vision to raise the people of all nations that will live in the atmosphere of God. Just brush it. Just, just vision to raise the people. Go to the Okay. Mission. Good mission. Our manage to raise the people of all nations that we infiltrate. It's okay. With the love and very life of God to the Knowledge of God's word and 
It's okay. I know you saw everything written under the mission. What? South Africa, Africa, yes, Ocean, Oceania, Nigeria, Israel. Okay, scriptural references. Is that all? Bring him into the true reality. Is that all? Is that all? Okay, the Bible references, right? John 1 14. Is that all? That's all she saw, right? Doesn't she deserve 100 over 100? She does, right? Good. Is there anything you saw that is different from what you, what you anything you, you will see that is different from what she saw? Yes. A.K.A. It's not clear enough. Embassy, something embassy. What else? Grace Rem International Mission. Okay, the logo. That's all. Okay. Now everybody look up. This is the difference between the people that place with the prophetic. Let me tell you what the what is called the law of focusing. Why I can give somebody much detail than you do. There are myriads of details on these things. They only choose to see what they desired to see. It's not as if God chooses to withdraw showing you phone numbers or showing you people's names. I think for all those that came to my office on Saturday for counseling, if they can speak, every one of them, I give them names of people in their families. Every one. There are things I don't like to do in the pulpit. Because I know young people. Everyone that came for counseling on Saturday asked them. I know they are here. Details of their names. Now, is this not a metal? Doesn't these things have colors? Did I add this now? It has always what? They choose to see what they want to see. See that? That's the law of focusing. Now, if I, have, if I leave them now by this thing I just said now, and I say, see now, you know they'll start saying, okay, see, check something now, sir. Okay, the colors of the, the map and the color of the, the logo, the yellow color. Did I add it now? It was there since, but you said that was all. Even the shape, is it not there? Is this thing not made from a starting material? You choose to see what you desired. See. Lift up your hands. Sit down. This is just page two. We'll continue some other time. You choose to see what you desire to see. Like I said for the lady, wow, I knew she was evil. I said, Lord, give me more details. Oh, I want her state now. The day you came to my office, I told you your state, right? I told him his state. He came to my office. Should I tell you I picked his state? Let me gist you. This is my son, so I can use it for my example. When he came to my office, and I wanted to pick his state of origin, thank God he's here. At least I can use, so you know it's not so we formed the testimonies. When he came, let me tell you how I picked his state. Immediately he sat down in the office. You know my normal way? I'll just put my hand like this. Those that are used to me. I'll listen to you carefully. You know what I'm doing? I'm waiting to pick. Lord, give me state. Straight. I want to know his state. Let me tell you what God said to me. Immediately I said that, that God should give me his state. The only thing that came to my mind was Rocha Sokorocha. Is he my cousin? I just justified you are from Emo State. Is that not what I told you? I didn't hear Emo. This is how I told him Emo. Maturity in the prophetic. Now, when I wanted to get his local government, I'll tell you what I did. When I told him that, we continued talking. I said, Lord, I need another one. I like, I like prophetic So I said, give me his local government. Suddenly, I had a friend in Anambra State. She's from Ihala. That's where she comes from. But I have already told him, Imo. So I knew I'll be wrong. And I applied wisdom. I said, I am hearing something Iha. He just completed it for me. Iha, right? <laughs> Are you 
sinner, it works. That's it. Now you would think with the head, yeah, this is for me most of the title. You are him, he said, yes, he had the This is how I got it. That's why when we begin to play with the prophetic, we begin to see how to decipher into revelation, how to interpret. You need it. You need it. Maybe you are just standing with this lady right now. Right? And suddenly, you just are remembering the school of Deborah in the Bible. What concerns you and Deborah in the Bible? Her name should be Deborah. <laughs> are we together? And I said, don't be scared to make mistakes. You cannot be a good carpenter without spoiling some woods. Or a good tailor without spoiling some people's clothes. Hallelujah. Now we are supposed to have an activation section. Alright? Last week on what is activation? I'm supposed to pray for people's spiritual senses to come alive. And then we'll do a five minute section. I'll switch everybody. And activate, release upon the atmosphere the giftings of the word of knowledge. And you will see people picking word for somebody else. I won't do it. They will pick for somebody. Alright? But I will apply wisdom in something. I will close the teaching now. And allow the pastor's appreciation service to go on. Then I will do that at the end of the service. Is that okay? Because if I pray now, some of you will scatter this place. And then there will be no appreciation again. <laughs> so let me allow everyone to sit down. Let's finish. Then we'll come back and we'll close with that. Is that okay? Is that okay? Please, were you blessed tonight? In the literal way you can understand. I challenge you, go and get any book on the prophetic. Or on how to hear God. Pair it and read. Sometimes you become more confused than you read. Scriptures, scriptures, scriptures. I have made it as simple as I can. In the literal way possible. As I can. Are we following? I told you sometimes you can just maybe see somebody see somebody. For instance, maybe I'm just passing by. I just saw this lady from far. And she looks like somebody I know. I told you two things to interpret there. She either has the same personality and spirit like the person I I thought of. So when I see that lady now, I can use the vantage point of what I know about that person I thought her mistake her for and give her a prophetic word. Without hearing anything again. Or sometimes, you can just see somebody. Immediately you see somebody, you don't even mistake them for something. Suddenly, the name of somebody pops to you. You say, you look much like my aunt. I will give a prophetic word by what I know about your aunt. Please, are we together? Be prophetic. I've taught us about colors, right? In the spirit. For those that were in angelic part two, the seven spirits of God. Splash of light. The presence of the angelic who do that some other time. Is that okay? My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you. I make a demand on your prophetic grace upon my life. Let it flow upon this house right now. I make a demand on your healing grace, O God. Your grace for spread. Your grace for speed. You said, son, you will never be able to hide yourself. That same grace that announces a man. Nine months in this territory with such an impact. Let that grace spread upon this house now, O God. grace of financial prosperity and abundance I enjoy. I have not had a need to beg. The grace of financial favors I enjoy. I break open upon this house of God. The wisdom of the ancient you placed upon me. Depths into your world. Access to divine secrets. Access to divine mysteries. I break loose now, now upon this house. Shaya la da para stella na bela gadesh la bambara gado shaya la da la gadesh the 
is to be a million, a, a, a blessing to millions and a blessing to generation. The grace that has sustained me and kept me thus far. The staying grace, the finisher's grace, the finisher's anointing. 16 years of work with you, still standing by grace, still standing by grace, still standing by grace. Upon this house, let that grace break loose. Some of you will feel fire on your eyes. Is a prophetic grace. Some of you will feel fire on your hands. Shaya gala 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 yo shaya la diata. The academic grace I enjoy on this land in this campus of God. Men susu wala gada yaga pila gada gada sha. La bambara di skala na mela gada sha. Rata kola man sohaka. My heart of God I break the rules upon this house. Pull as much as you can. You may never get such an opportunity in any meeting again. The spirit of excellence upon my life. The speed, grace for speed, grace for ease. I break loose upon this house right now. Not from my heart, O God, if I find favor upon it in your sight, O God, anything anyone desired in my life in this place, Lord, let it speak for them. Let it drop upon them. If I find favor in your sight, if I have done this work for you from my heart, and not for vain glory or for any profit of any kind, La Bezuzia la Gabira na na kwa Joshua na na yaga la gadash Ia na Mezuzu pala deas Rega de la gade la gadash And as a gift to the people, I command eyes open now, eyes open, eyes open, ears open. Let the spiritual senses of your people come alive. Let the spiritual senses of your people be activated, O God. Shia la gala gadash Mera de Zuya la Gabila gade gadash. I push their destinies by force. I cause every form of stagnation. I push their spiritual work by fire. I push it forward. I push the academics forward. I push their finances forward. There are instant miracles everywhere. Check, you are sick, you came here. That disease is gone. It doesn't matter what it is. I, I promise you, you are healed. Go and do a test. You will never see it again. You will never see it. Not finally, everybody lift up your hands. The gift of hunger you gave me. That makes me keep panting for you at all times. Shaya laga laga biya toka la man sozo the gift of hunger. What has sustained me, O oh God? Get me on fire, get me burning. Thus far with you, O oh God. Let it flow upon your people now. Let it flow upon your people now. Thank you for listening.